Welcome to this video on capturing USB data with Wireshark. In this video, I'm going to start a quick disclaimer before explaining the reason for needing to read the USB traffic when it's appropriate to do so. I will explain about how to set up and use Wireshark on Linux, how I extracted the information from the communication that I captured, and what I eventually found to be the problem. First, the disclaimer. In this video, I'll be capturing data going via USB using Wireshark. This may also be known as Wireshark USB sniffing. This is for educational purposes only and could be useful for debugging your own programs. Do not use this to monitor other people's USB devices or to capture anyone's personal information. Note, however, this is a really useful technique for your own debugging. So there are lots of times you may legitimately want to do this. This video is going to be quite technical and a bit specific. So apologies to any of my regular subscribers if this isn't relevant to you. I'll be creating more videos about various maker projects in future, so please watch out for them instead. In this, I'm going to show how to use Wireshark to capture USB traffic, which can be useful if you're trying to debug a USB serial application, or in my case, trying to understand communication flows with the aim of replacing commercial software. I'm going to be showing this on Linux. You can use Wireshark to capture USB data on Windows and other operating systems, but it happens to be Linux that I'm using. The reason I needed this. The short answer is that I needed to monitor data going to a laser cutter to be able to find out why the software wasn't working with the laser cutter. If you just want the short explanation, then feel free to skip to the next chapter, but I'll give a proper explanation for anyone that's interested. I recently got a laser cutter module for my Creality S3 3D printer. It didn't come with any software, and after some searching, I decided upon using Lightburn. It's commercial software, and I had to pay for a license, but it supported Linux, and I've been happy with it until now. There's now been an announcement that they're ending Lightburn support for Linux. Annoying, to say the least, especially as the license wasn't particularly cheap. Well, not for a hobbyist, anyway. They gave some reason about only having a small percentage of users on Linux, and being difficult to support lots of different distributions, but I'd be happy with supporting a single distribution and going along with that. Anyway, basically, it's got me to looking again at whether there are some open source alternatives which can be used with Linux instead. There are two that I've found. One is LaserWeb and the other VisiCut. LaserWeb looks really good, but hasn't been updated for a few years and trying to install following the instructions failed. It's written in Node.js. I don't really have much experience with Node.js uh, to be able to look at upgrading it for the later versions of the libraries, or really just to get up to speed with the software. So I discounted that. Which brings me on to VisiCut. The user interface doesn't look quite as good as LaserWeb, but it's under active development, and there's been a release within the last few months. They provide a Debian package, which installed with no problem. However, it only supports a limited number of laser cutters. And whilst it does support G-code and a GRBL variant of G-code, when I tried to use it with my cutter, I got errors from both of these. The software is written in Java, which I know fairly well, but there's a lot of code. It would take a long time to really understand it. So finally, I tried using G-code created with VisiCut and trying to send that to LaserCutter using Universal G-code Sender. And again, I got an error message. So I'm now, I'm suspecting that either the software is trying to use some kind of unsupported message, or there is something wrong with a serial conversion. Hence, I wanted to see the data being sent to Laser Cutter. And I used both VisiCut and LaserBurn so that I could see the difference between the two and hopefully identify the reason it was failing. So here is the scenario. I've got a laser cutter and I want to see the data going over the serial port. I looked at a few different ways of capturing the data, but I thought Wireshark would probably be best. It's better known for capturing network traffic, sniffing a network through an ethernet port, but it can also sniff other data packets as well. First step is to install Wireshark. Depending upon the distribution, it can be installed using sudo apt install Wireshark or using the appropriate app center for your operating system. Depending upon how you install it, it may give you an option to allow you to run as either root or as a non-root user. For capturing from USB, you'll need root permissions each time to set up the USB monitoring. So I recommend just running Wireshark with root permissions regardless. It therefore doesn't matter which you choose at that install stage. After it's installed, you need to run sudo modprobe usbmon and now launch Wireshark as root, sudo Wireshark. 
and you should now see a number of USB MON devices. I believe the first monitors all devices and the others may only show specific devices. You can use the first, then we'll filter down to the specific device using the Wireshark filters. You'll need to know the details of the device and what bus it's connected to. So after connecting the device, run sudo dmessage and look for the device details. In this case, the laser module is shown as an expressive device, so we can look for that. Then run sudo lsusb to see the bus value. On the alternative, you can look directly at the kernel devices file, which is a slash sys slash kernel slash debug slash usb slash devices. I'm going to filter on usb.source with the bus and the device number or USB destination and the bus or the device number. You can then run the software to send data to the laser cutter. I then use the export packet dissections as a text file. I then wanted to look at the leftover part of the data packets, which essentially shows the data sent in the communications. I did that using grep, looking for the word leftover, and then redirected that to a new file name. Note there's a capital L, or you could use the minus I option to ignore case. For example, grep leftover capture one test one export.txt and I redirected that to capture dash test one dash leftover.txt. You can now strip out the leftover capture data using Z, using this string here. I'll put these instructions in the description so you don't need to capture them from the screen. And then insert a spacers because the values are hex and using spaces I could pad them out into hex chunks using set. Then to convert from ASCII to text, I used XXD. XXD minus R minus P and used capture leftover.txt file and outputted that as capture ASCII.txt file. And this will result in a text file showing the messages. Unfortunately, it doesn't include the direction of the data, whether it's coming from the PC or from the laser cutter. It would be possible to add that, but would need some additional steps, or perhaps I'd put some Python code around it instead of using the sed and xxd commands. But this is enough to give the data, and it gives an idea of the data flow, so I could work out what was going on. I could sort of deduce the direction myself. Looking at the data, I can see it's based around G-code. And compared to the output from VisiCut, it looks more similar to the standard G-code output rather than the GRBL G-code output format. But both are based on G-code. It's the messages at the start that got me thinking. What is this error message about? GPIO ISR handler. I'd actually seen this in the console of Lightburn, but as Lightburn was working fine, I assumed it was just a warning in the Lightburn code. But seeing this in the serial data, I now figured out the data is actually coming from the laser cutter controller itself. It appears to be a bug in the code 
running on the laser cutter, most likely based on GRBL. When I tried using VisiCut, then it was failing when it got that error back. Obviously just didn't know how to handle that error. So presumably the error is being triggered at an early step, perhaps when the software is trying to detect what kind of laser cutter it is and what it would support. So I therefore tried to send the code manually and I used PuTTY application. I could have used other serial terminal programs, perhaps Minicob, but I like PuTTY and it's quite easy to use it as a GUI application. So when I copied the G code that was created by VisiCut, it worked. Not only that, it didn't give the error message that I'd seen from both Lightburn and VisiCut. Hence, the problem does indeed appear to be from the laser cutter module. Perhaps it could be fixed with a new firmware update, but there doesn't appear to be an official update, and I don't really want to go trying to compile my own version of GRBL for hardware that I'm not familiar with. So it seems better to have the PC ignore the errors of the scanner. I'm also not ready to discard Lightburn just yet, in favour of sending manual G-codes through the serial port. Not only does Lightburn make it easier to position and control the cutter manually, but it already includes error handling to reduce the risk of it setting fire to anything. I could create my own code that could handle that, but for now I'm going to stick with Lightburn whilst it still runs. But at least I do have an alternative when I can no longer rely on the software that I paid for when it's no longer available. This video has really been about monitoring USB traffic using Wireshark. Whilst I've used the laser cutter for the example in here, this could be applied to any kind of USB project that you're working on where you want to see that data. So hopefully you found that useful. And if you did, please give this video a like. Thanks for watching. And please subscribe if you haven't already done so. I look forward to seeing you in a future video.